Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, when Brian and I are out and about, people sometimes will say, hey, it's the weed of the week, guys, because we're always talking about killing the weeds in your fields. Today, we're going to focus on killing the weeds in your ditches and your fence lines, because a lot of times, that's where the weed problems begin. Well, we're also going to focus on controlling weeds in your fields as well, especially today in corn. Early post-emerge residual products in corn, there are so many to choose from. We want to try to help you sort those out. Well, we'll need to sort them out and tell you which ones will work best on our Weed of the Week. We'll get to that a little later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Most of the time during our Farm Basics segment, we want to talk to non-farmers especially to try to help non-farmers just understand a little bit more about what we do on the farm. But today our Farm Basics message is really for you as a farmer to tell you, hey, it's time to check your grain bins. Whether you have grain in there right now or not, you got to be thinking about both this last year's crop and this coming year's crop and what's going to happen with your grain bin situation. Once we get into spring and summer, there are so many things that are going to pull you away from your farm place. You're out in the fields doing things. You're planting, you're spraying, you're harvesting. And sometimes checking the grain bin goes by the wayside. And if you do have grain in the bin, I'll start with that. Uh, you really need to be paying attention because there's been a big change in the air temperature and also the humidity. Inside that grain bin, that grain is going to be cool and dry. Now you've got warm and humid outside the bin and a very hot sun beating on the sides of the bin. This leads to potential problems. So that grain temperature in the bin should be within 20 degrees or so at most of the outside temperature. So if it's 80 degrees for a high in your area now, we need to get that grain temperature up a little bit inside the bin and we need to start moving it. If we have a huge difference in, in the temperature, you're going to have some problems down the road. To monitor all of this stuff, we have put agri-dry systems on our bins just so we can see, hey, what is happening internally with the temperature? Are we getting any grain spoilage? What, what's our moisture situation? All those types of things can be controlled to some degree by running your fans or not running your grain bin fans. But nevertheless, that still doesn't mean you shouldn't check your grain bins. So actually go to your grain bins from time to time, check them out, and just see what kind of condition your grain is in. All right, if you've been hauling some grain out of those bins, beware of crusting on the top. We hear of issues all the time that somebody gets hurt or even killed because there was a crust over the top of the grain, they started pulling grain out from underneath it, and when they climbed in the bin, they fell through. So be very cautious. If you've got some crusting or you've got some mold or spoilage that's already started in your bin, haul the grain out and use all the safety precaution methods available so you don't breathe that in and get it into your lungs and have any issues. The main thing I always tell people is have a buddy. Have somebody with you at the grain bin if you need to go inside and do any work because grain isn't flowing out. That's probably the most important thing. The other important thing is to make sure you're working on all this stuff in advance. So let's say you've already cleaned your grain bins out and yeah, it might be a little while before you need to do some of these, these tasks, but maybe you have wheat that's going to be harvested in not all that long. Start getting those grain bins ready. Get every last piece of dirt out from inside the bin, every old piece of grain, everything you can do. Check for leaks in your bins. Just go through everything from top to bottom in that grain bin before the next crop goes in there. And right before that crop goes in, make sure you spray inside for insects, that's incredibly important, spraying inside and outside that grain bin. We typically use malathion inside the grain bin, something that's uh, not quite so super dangerous for humans, but yet it's gonna have good insect control. Well, keeping an eye on the grain bins can certainly save or make you some money. So can controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. 
One of the biggest yield limiting factors on farms is even crop emergence, and only one closing wheel will get your growing season started right. Furrow Cruiser spiked closing wheels from Copperhead Ag are proven to yield better than standard rubber tire and cast iron closing wheels in all conditions. With yield gains that give you a return on investment the first season, there's no reason to run a standard closing system again. Visit CopperheadAG.com today to get your 2017 growing season started right. Aerial fungicide and insecticide application means high speed, low volume, and high cost to reach the top of the plant canopy. But 360 Undercover is a low speed, high volume application system that provides precision placement under the crop canopy. You hit the target and get coverage on both the top and underside of leaves. Plus, 360 Undercover mounts to the boom of your self-propelled sprayer so you or your ag retailer can get more value from this important machine. Boost efficacy with 360 Undercover. Learn more at 360yieldcenter.com. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. When it comes to corn, post-emerge residual herbicides, there are just so many choices anymore, it's kind of hard to sort through all those things. Well, we used to just think about, well, I could spray Banvel and Atrazine and I'll get a couple of weeks of residual. Yep. And that's what we thought a residual herbicide was post-emerge. Right, but see, back then we had a full rate of a good pre-emerge grass herbicide down, so all we really cared about post-emerge was you know, broad leaves and maybe a tiny little bit of grass. It, it just was whole different back a few years ago. Whereas today we've got all these Roundup resistant weeds and guys want to have something pre for broad leaves and something post for broad leaves and more residual for broad leaves because we've got a changing weed spectrum and we've really got to make sure we have perfect control in corn because that's the crop where it's the easiest to control weeds. All right, so you could use the standard grass herbicides, your Surpass, Harness, Dual, Outlook, and you can use them uh, for the most part up to about 11 inch tall corn, depending on what the labels say, of course. Uh, and that's one thing you could do, but instead of just talking about those products today, there's a lot of combination products out there that you may consider as well. We've had a lot of questions about this in particular this year because the HPPDs have gone down so much. You can buy generic Callisto, it's dirt cheap. You could throw that with a harness or surpass or something else and maybe a glyphosate and all of a sudden you got a three-way mix, three modes of action. That would work out really well, but there are other ways to do it that are just as or even less expensive. Well, when you think about the HPPDs, you hear products like Halex and Caprino and uh, now Resicor this year certainly gotten a lot of attention because the prices come way down and, and you've then got don't multiple forget about, modes of action. Yeah, and don't forget about Acuron Flexi or even straight Acuron. So you got a lot of choices. We want to talk about those products in particular. All right, well, the market leaders for a number of years have been Sure Start and Triple Flex. And you've basically got Hornet, which is Python and Stinger, plus Harness or Surpass. Those have been good products and a lot of guys have looked at, well, I'm going to put down something at a real light rate pre-emerge and then I'm going to come back with a good strong rate of these early post-emerge to, to basically get the broad leaves under control that are already up yeah, plus but, get some residual. But here's the problem, Darren. You've got Stinger in there, which isn't that great to begin with. And then you've got Python, which is an ALS herbicide. So what good is that going to do on ALS resistant weeds? Nothing. So you just don't have a lot of control, which is why 
Sure Start and Triple Flex have been so cheap. All right, so a better way to go has been putting the HPPDs out. Now, as we've talked about on the show over the winter, using HPPDs all by themselves is just a recipe for resistance coming in not very many years. In fact, some people have already seen a little bit of it now. But if you're using one of the HPPDs, many times you're going to be using something that's going to have two or even three products in it. Okay, so let's take Resicore, for example. It's basically the same thing as Triple Flex and Sure Start, except they pulled the Python out and inserted Callisto. Okay, so now you've got a combination of Harness or Surpass, whichever one, I mean, they're the same thing. Okay, so Harness and Surpass plus Stinger plus Callisto, well, that's a pretty good combination. You got three different modes of action that'll have activity on most Roundup resistant weeds. All right, Brian, another one that you had mentioned earlier was Acuron, and Acuron is, is fine, but it has a bunch of atrazine in it. And I like Acuron Flexi a little bit better uh, just to avoid that. And this is one of those things that we can get into a debate on if you'd like, but putting that atrazine out there post-emerge is fine in most situations, depending on your crop rotation. I like putting it in separate, that way I can control what it has, or I just use less of one of these products, so I only put a half a pound of atrazine well, out. Well, you can do that. Just cut your, yeah, you can just cut your rate of Acuron if you want to go down that low. And basically, either Acuron or Acuron Flexi, you're going to get Dual in there. You're also going to get Callisto, and then a new HPPD called Bicyclopyrone. With the Bicyclopyrone, we seem to see a little bit better activity on things like wild buckwheat, for example. It's just a little bit different product, although it's the same mode of action, it does have a slightly different weed spectrum than Callisto. One of the challenges this year though, Brian, is with the prices of these HPPD products dropping so much, some products are dropping, some are not. Some retailers are holding their prices and some are dropping to kind of match the market. And it's one of those things where you really have to start from scratch. You can't go into the season saying, well, I'm gonna use this because I did it last year. The price may be several dollars an acre more than something that could be almost the same product this year. Well, that's kind of what we look at with Halex. So Halex has really been the leader here in this market for probably the last three years, at least in the upper Midwest. Well, what is Halex? It's just dual Callisto and glyphosate. Well, you can mix your own now cheaper than you can go Halex. So it's very unusual because even up to last year, you could not mix your own and be cheaper than Halex. So we're expecting a price decrease going into next year with Halex, but for this year, it's priced just the way it's priced. Now, I, that's not to say it isn't a good product, and in terms of mixing and everything else, there are certainly some advantages to Halex. So you can still continue using Halex, but we just wanted you to at least be aware there are some newer options like Resicor and Acuron and Acuron Flexi that are all very acceptable as well. Hey, one other thing, and this is kind of hindsight here just a little bit. If you didn't put a pre-emerge herbicide down and you're coming in post and you say, well, there's already a whole bunch of weeds up, I'm just gonna wipe them out with a one-pass approach, that's fine, you can kill the weeds that way, there's no doubt about it but there's certainly less yield. And when you look at university trials and even private trials that have been done, you're giving up yield if you're letting the weeds come up in your cornfields and not putting a pre-emerge herbicide down. So it's something that if you're out there doing it right now and you're saying, well, hey, I'm killing all the weeds that are up, hey, take a look at it on your farm, uh, put that pre down and then come back with these posts. You're gonna get way better coverage out of these post-emerge products, uh, plus you're gonna get more yield to boot. The main thing we're after here when we start talking about residual herbicides period is you've got to get to crop canopy. I don't care what crop we're talking about. And it does make a difference how many weeds you have out there, especially if you've got our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want.
how will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. How will you control weeds in your fence lines and ditches? That's what we want to talk about today. For many years, farmers have been spraying Roundup or Liberty in their fields, and we can't hang that spray boom out over the fence line and try and control weeds or spray them on the ditches or, or something around the edges of the field because we'd kill all the grass too. Now back in the old days when guys were spraying, uh, say a Clarity or a 2,4-D or something like that in their fields, yeah, if some of that herbicide got into the ditch or the fence line, we would kill the weeds. Uh, so this has been something that's gotten worse over the last uh, 20, 25 years. Now we've got to deal with the problem because we've got a lot of resistant weeds that are starting on the ditches and, and uh, terraces and those kinds of places, but we've got some great options to get those weeds under control. Well, the biggest thing that we want to talk about is what is your neighboring crop? So the thing I've been most excited about for the last couple years has been Extend Soybeans because, hey, if we can spray dicamba in our soybeans, and we know we can already spray dicamba in our corn, if we have corn and soybean fields next to each other, that means we can spray dicamba in the fence lines or in the ditches. That's awesome. But the problem is, if you're going to use old Clarity or Banville, you may have some volatility. You may have some off-target movement that you don't want. You know, we've heard from people around the country that are concerned about this. Oh boy, we don't want you guys spraying dicamba or spraying 2,4-D in the ditches and telling other people about this because there's going to be drift into our fields. The key thing that Brian mentioned there is it's the type of dicamba or the type of 2,4-D that you're spraying. We've got low volatility formulations now with Ingenia and with Extendamax that only cost a little bit more than some of the other dicambas on the market. If we're using those in these sensitive areas where we're concerned about, hey, you know, it's only 50 feet across the road to that next crop, uh, should I be concerned? Or it's 150 feet over to this crop, should I be concerned? Hey, I'm a lot less concerned if I'm spraying the right form of these chemicals. Well, Darren mentioned the new Dicamba products, Extendamax and Ingenia, but how about the new 2,4-D, Freelix? I'm actually more excited about Freelix than I am about the Dicamba because just think of how much 2,4-D is used all over the country and people are using formulations that do have a fair amount of volatility. So switch to Freelex. There's almost no volatility. We've tested this on our farm for a couple of years now. It's unbelievable. We've had it 30 inches away from sensitive crop and had no problem. Now certainly we've got to pay attention to where the wind's blowing and all that type of thing. But with almost no volatility in a 2,4-D, Freelex looks to us like an amazing new product that's only just a little bit more in terms of price than normal 2,4-D. Now we don't want to get into any trouble here. You definitely have to follow the label and we're not encouraging spraying when it's windy and those kinds of things. So uh, make sure you're following the label. Use all the common sense of, hey, which way is the wind blowing? If it's blowing away from a sensitive crop, that's the time that you want to do this. But what I'm saying is now we have some good options that we can spray in areas like ditches and fence lines to control these weeds and stop them from spreading out into our fields. Unfortunately, the new 2,4-D and the new dicamba products will not control our Weed of the Week, but we'll tell you what will coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters. 
without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is brome grass. And actually, I want to talk about something a little bit different before we talk about how to control well, this Well, let's weed. not talk about the weed of the week, <laughs> Well, Well, look, I, I do want to talk about brome grass, but brome grass can be beneficial too because it actually can hold down some broadleaf weeds sometimes. We were just talking about fence lines and ditches. Well, because we've had Roundup crops and Liberty crops, it's very common to get Roundup and Liberty sprayed a little too far. So you spray into that field border a little too much, or you spray into your grass waterway a little too much, and you can actually kill off some of the brome grass. So that's one of the reasons we're kind of excited about, hey, there, there may be a little bit more 2,4-D and dicamba and uh, the HPPDs and all these types of products used, and maybe a little bit less Roundup as we go forward. All right, so with brome grass, uh, just a couple of things that I would mention. First of all, the seed viability is generally less than two years. So if brome grass grows to, goes to seed, uh, if you do a good job controlling it and keeping it out of your field, you won't have to fight it forever. The, but it's a perennial weed, so you may have to fight it well, forever. Well, the rhizomes, the rhizomes right. underneath the ground are the real key. So uh, when you've got, that's why it works so good in a grass waterway, for yep. example. But if you want to get brome grass under control, you need a herbicide that moves all the way down into the rhizomes. Well, guess what? There's really only one that's very good, and that is Roundup. Now, the challenge with using Roundup is a lot of times guys are used to using a quart, and you say, well, I sprayed a quart of Roundup on brome grass and it just kind of burned the top growth off and then it greened up again. That's not going to do it. You're going to need the full labeled rate if you want to get it down into that rhizome system to kill the plant completely. Okay, so what is the full labeled rate? You're just going to have to look that up because every situation may be a little bit different, but we just want you to understand, keep your water volume a little bit lower and keep your Roundup rate a little bit higher so you have good concentrated droplets. The other thing is avoid tillage. If you do tillage, you end up cutting that plant up and there are a lot of times rhizomes below ground that will put a shoot out a week or two or three weeks after you've sprayed the Roundup. Hey, one little identification thing that I think is pretty cool. On the leaves of brome grass, there will be a little W, or uh, my oldest boy, his name starts with an M. Uh, he says it's an M on the leaves. Anyway, look for that jagged line, whether it's an M or a W, depending on which way you're looking at it. That a lot of times will tell you, hey, this is brome grass I'm looking at. All right, so once again, I wish there was an easier path we could tell you other than just spraying Roundup. Uh, we just don't have a lot of great options for controlling this perennial weed, brome grass. That's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. We've got teams all over talking about low salt, micronutrient, high efficiency fertilizer teams like it's something new. What's your take? I tell you, Don, AgroLiquid team has had these technologies for over 30 years. And really, unprecedented application versatility, compatibility, and ease of use. So, they're your pick for the championship season. You bet, their full line of nutrients is gonna take them all the way to the root zone. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Thanks, Don. Dave, after the impressive turnaround last year, what are your plans for the coming season? Well, as you know, I changed teams mid-season last year. Now I know my AgriLiquid partners are ready to go to work. I'm completely happy with the performance and the level of dedication I get from AgriLiquid. From the guys in the field? Everyone at AgriLiquid. I believe AgriLiquid has me on the road to success. There you have it, Don. Dave has a plan for another championship season with AgriLiquid. They're my pick, too. AgriLiquid's going all the way. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. 
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. The smallest, most overlooked piece of equipment on the farm is the topic of today's Iron Talk. I'm speaking, of course, about spray nozzles. This tiny piece of technology plays a big part in the accuracy of every crop protection application you make. The spray nozzle helps you control off-target drift. It's also key to getting the droplet size and coverage you need to be effective. So what do you need to know in order to make broadcast applications work the best on your farm this year? Here are four things to keep in mind as you prepare your sprayer each time you head to the field. First of all, it's important to start with the basics. The most common broadcast spray nozzles used on farms today have tapered nozzles. This means more product lands in the middle of the spray pattern than on the sides. Because of that, nozzles must have a nearly perfect pattern to apply product evenly across the field. Your two action points here are before every season and several times throughout is to A, check the output of each nozzle to ensure that an even amount of product comes out, and B, to watch the pattern of the nozzle. It is so cheap and so easy to replace a nozzle, you can't afford not to replace one if it's not functioning perfectly. Second on the list is boom height. To get the proper overlap, you must operate your boom at the proper height above the crop. Most people think that just means don't get too low, but it also requires you not to get too high above the crop. When your boom is several feet higher than the optimal range, you're obviously more susceptible to drift and poor coverage. In fact, labels on newer products like Extendamax specifically mention this. It's just common sense. Third, nozzle spacing is something you'll likely only change in the off-season. Putting the nozzles closer together allows you to operate the boom at a lower height above the crop. And finally, tip selection is another thing you need to consider with every different application you make. For example, on our farm, we use either three-way or five-way nozzle bodies on our sprayers so we can quickly and easily change nozzles as we switch products. Then, just look at the free Ag PhD spray tip guide to select exactly which nozzle will work best with the product that you're spraying. Watch your spray pattern, boom height, nozzle spacing, and tip selection closely, and you'll see better performance with everything you spray this year. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. We're on Sirius XM channel 147 each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.